Sam and Max Hit the Road was an adventure game made by LucasArts based on the comic book duo created by one of their designers, Steve Purcell, who later went on to work for Pixar. Sam and Max are a dog and rabbit pair who go by the title of Freelance Police to, in their own words, savagely protect the rights of the innocent. I hope there was nobody on that bus. Nobody we know, at least. Sam is the more level-headed of the two, with a private dick suit and delivery, and Max is his overactive buddy, who solves everything with violence. The plot of the game has the two of them tracking a lost Bigfoot named Bruno, who has been freed from a freak show by the giraffe-necked girl Trixie who fell in love with him. As the plot evolves, Sam and Max discover that Bigfoots in blocks of ice have been going missing all across the country, and that a villainous country western singer Conroy Bumpus is on a quest to catch himself one. Hey, let me get this straight. You want us to go traipsing all over the country looking for a soggy Bigfoot? I've never been traipsing before. Does it hurt? The game is littered with interesting locations, goofy characters, and cartoony action. Sam and Max's rapport in particular is what makes the game so great, with the pair having smart-ass comments for every situation. Also, the lush cartoony look of this game is quite impressive considering it was made for MS-DOS. However, it stacks up well if you compare it to much later titles in the LucasArts library like The Curse of Monkey Island and Full Throttle. The voice cast is also excellent. I especially love Bill Farmer as Sam. The actor is better known as the official voice of Goofy. He has a down-to-earth delivery, and even the more absurd things he says sound important. Just another random acts of violence. Max is voiced by Nick Jameson, and he adds a lot of goofy energy to the mix. I'll never shave again. You never did. There aren't many huge stars in the voice cast, most of them being LucasArts regulars, such as Danny Delk, better known as the voice of Murray from Monkey Island. Don't be dense! However, the acting and dialogue is superb, and the comedy is admittedly what keeps the game from going stale, since the storyline is honestly a little straightforward. Sam and Max would go on to have several more adventures in game form after LucasArts stopped making adventure games. Michael Stanley and Sean Clark, the game's principal designers, would also develop Escape from Monkey Island and were the founding members of Telltale Games, who later went on to create three more Sam and Max installments. However, if you've played the Telltale titles, I have to warn you not to jump into the original Sam and Max title, expecting it to be as easy as the Telltale installments. Percent sign, Amher sand, dollar sign. And colon, semicolon, too! What are you ing doing? Swearing in longhand, asterisk mouth. There's two major flaws with this game, which honestly keep it from being truly a standout title in the adventure game genre. The first problem is the interface. The designers wanted to rid Sam and Max of the verb bar, seen in prior LucasArts games, and instead you cycle through the actions by right-clicking, similar to the Sierra adventure games. You can also activate actions from the inventory, but honestly, that's a bit too much work. However, I also think the right-click method doesn't really work so well, especially in a game with timing puzzles, and it just makes the gameplay much more awkward than it needs to be. This was before they created the verb system used in Full Throttle and Curse of Monkey Island. And yes, I know there are keyboard shortcuts, just as in all other LucasArts adventure games, but in my opinion, if you're playing a point-and-click adventure, it's reasonable to expect that you only need to use the mouse. Hell, it's in the title of the whole subgenre, point and click. It really shouldn't be any more complicated than that. The second major flaw is the game's difficulty, which is added to by a number of really poor design choices. To the game's credit, you can visit a multitude of locations and discover many of them without much effort, but this game commits several cardinal sins of the adventure game genre. Some items' hitboxes are too generous or too tiny, important items are hidden in the background, you can gather up superfluous inventory items way too easily. Some things which don't seem like puzzles actually are puzzles. There's a general lack of context clues, and the few context clues that you get are incredibly unclear. Not to mention that at one point you're expected to exploit what really just seems like a glitch in the game. In other words, this is an adventure game where there's way too many leaps of logic for you to reasonably solve anything without clicking every inch of every screen. Now, I'm not saying all the puzzles are like this, and a good number of them can be solved with logical deduction. But you can clearly tell that this was a game where the designers were out to trick the player as much as possible. Not cool, LucasArts. Not cool. Well, this is undignified. It's a type of game where you can best enjoy it by having the walkthrough within an arm's reach. And that's kind of the disappointment of it. 
That's not to say the game is bad, and there's several funny and cool moments in it. My favorite moments include visiting the Mystery Vortex for the first time. I mean, that place is just frickin' trippy. Sam, this place is making my head ping. That's probably just the metal plate in your head. Trying to free Max from the driving range with gators, may I add. And to my surprise, I got to experience the only other song section in a LucasArts adventure game, besides the Curse of Monkey Island, of course. And now with this Bigfoot and giraffe neck freak, I finally have a full menagerie. Hit it, boys! Overall, Sammy Max Hit the Road actually is a really funny and well-crafted game, but one with a lot of stupid stuff that prevents you from fully experiencing it as a solid adventure game. For its comedic writing and cartoony antics, I would say it's a definite must-play from the LucasArts Adventure Game catalog, but as an adventure game overall, it does leave a lot to be desired.